Hey folks, this is Dan Solomon with the bloodsugarblueprint.com. Today I want to talk to you about the best diet for type 2 diabetes. Now, managing your type 2 diabetes effectively depends a majority on the foods you choose to eat, not someone else. See, combining the right type of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats together can have a dramatic impact on how your di diabetes affects your body. It can either have a positive effect or a negative effect. Now, unfortunately, most of the diabetic diets and nutrition information given by doctors and other healthcare professionals is based on a limited or even outdated research. It simply is ineffective in properly managing type 2 diabetes. The people with diabetes, maybe even you, follow these bad dietary recommendations and are having limited success or no success at all. Most in these people are mostly relying on medications to control their blood sugar. Medications have proven to have little effect on improving diabetes, but rather they just mask the symptoms of diabetes. Medications simply don't address the root cause of type 2 diabetes. Plus, you run the risk of harmful side effects, many of them. We've all heard the commercials. Now, food has the ability to treat type 2 diabetes at the cause, the root cause. Like uh, Hippocrates has said, uh, let food be thy medicine. Using food for medicine, you will be able to maintain healthy blood sugar levels, lower your risk of all diabetic complications, lose weight, increase your energy, improve sexual performance, who doesn't want that, uh, improve your health, and reverse your diabetes altogether. Now, the diet I'm suggesting is based on sound research. It's time-tested and has proven to be effective in attacking diabetes at its root cause. It is the best diet for type 2 diabetes. Now, let's get in and start talking about carbohydrates. This is where much of the confusion comes in. We've all seen that look, and you've probably given that look before. Should you should you avoid carbs? How much should you eat if you do eat them? And which carbs are good, and which ones are bad? Now, let's get one thing clear. Carbohydrates are the only foods that affect your blood sugar. Things like, uh, you know, soda, fruits, vegetables. Carbohydrates come from, a, from an array of foods like potato chips and cookies, the juice and soda, the vegetables and fruits. They all affect your blood sugar and, that, and your diabetes in some, uh, in some a positive way and some in a negative way. Now, which carbohydrates should you avoid? Well, the general rule of thumb I like to go by is avoid any type of carbohydrate that it comes in a box, that's in a package, or is pre-cooked or frozen, or that has been processed. Now, most of these, carbo uh, these types of carbohydrates are filled with simple sugars or high fructose corn syrup and other additives that negatively impact your blood sugar. And the sad thing is, uh, sometimes they're actually hidden in the food as uh, certain additives, so you don't actually know what you're getting. You definitely want to avoid high fructose corn syrup, one of the nastiest ingredients on the planet. Now, foods to include, uh, sorry, foods to avoid, uh, pastries, cookies, cakes, and pies, of course, uh, table sugar, and even sugar substitutes like equal sweet and low splendor. Now, research has shown that all these have some sort of negative impact on your body, either tricking your body uh, to thinking it's sugar and actually raising uh, insulin production in your body or causing spikes in uh, blood sugar, or they have been linked to uh, one form of cancer or another. Pastas and bread, cereal, and other whole grains are actually dangerous um, when you are type 2 diabetic. Uh, milk, juice, sodas. So you're probably wondering, oh god, yeah, I eliminated most of the foods in your diet. So you're probably wondering which carbohydrates you, you should be eating. Well, the rule of thumb here I like to go by is eat a majority of your carbohydrates that used to be alive, that used to be living entities. Now, these carbohydrates are minimally processed, high in essential nutrients, and have no hidden additives, and have a positive effect on your blood sugar and your health. Now, these, uh, the foods to uh, eat include all green leafy and non-leafy vegetables, bright colored vegetables, and all fruit berries like blackberries, blueberries, osceai berries, uh, cranberries, 
these things have proven to be very high in antioxidant value and can actually help improve your diabetes. Now, making the switch to the right type of carbohydrates uh, will allow you to maintain good blood sugar levels and prevent the roller coaster uh, blood sugar effect. I'm sure many of you have, have experienced it. You, know, you have high blood sugars, low blood sugars, you know, up and down. You don't know which way you're going. It you will improve your energy levels, prevent fatigue, and reduce inflammation within your body. Now that we talked about carbohydrates, let's move on to protein. Now, protein is made up of a string of amino acids. Now, proteins are the building blocks of RNA, uh, sorry, DNA and RNA, the human cell structure, and the precursors to insulin production. Now, consuming high amounts of quality protein is vital for optimal health and disease prevention. We eat proteins mostly from animals, which are called complete proteins. And we also get some plant, uh, protein from plants, which is called now, when protein is eaten, it is broken down into amino acids, and then uh, it rebuilds in our own. Uh, then it is rebuilt in our own body uh, proteins to prevent maximum absorption. Now, high quality proteins include red meats, poultry, fish, eggs, nuts, seeds, cheese, yogurt, and beans. You can also get protein from supplements like whey protein. Most of us have heard that. Have heard of that? Uh, soy protein which comes from the hemp plant. Hemp uh, protein is uh, very interesting because it is an actual complete protein, just as, a, as you would eat an egg. Um, and that leads me to egg protein powder. Now, just to make sure, if you do choose to go the route of supplements for some of your proteins, um, if you say you're vegetarian and you want to supplement some protein, uh, you want to make sure you look for ones of good quality. The label should contain a USP seal, the United States of Pharma. That ensures the quality, and that's it has been inspected for the quality, basically meaning that you're getting what you're paid for. Now, why is animal protein so important? Well, animal protein is by far the best source for adequate. Uh, sorry, animal protein is by far the best source for adequate quality protein. If you're a vegetarian, you can combine vegetables, beans, lentils, nuts, and soy products to meet your protein needs. And you have to do this on a daily basis to make sure you're getting adequate. Vegetarians often have to consume very high amounts of these foods just to meet their minimum protein needs. The quality of animal proteins is very important. Knowing the source of any animal you consume is critical to avoid negative health effects associated with grain-fed, hormone-stuffed, antibiotic-filled, and chemically loaded meats. Remember, whatever the animal was fed is what you're essentially eating and what ultimately ends up as the building blocks for your cells and your body. Now, what type of protein should you be eating? Well, here's a list of the protein sources I recommend. Naturally raised, pasture or grass-fed organic beef, pork, lamb, goat, or bison. Wild meat, if you're a hunter. Um, venison, elk, turkey, rabbit. And free-range organic poultry, duck, or turkey. Um, eggs that are cage-free. Wild fish. Um, a lot of the fish that you get in your grocery stores, unfortunately, is farm-raised, and uh, I won't go into too much detail, but it's not a pretty sight on what they feed the fish. You want to look for like things like sockeye, wild salmon, um, and, you know, if you're into it, an outdoors person, or you know some of this, you know, I try to get your fish from that source. Nuts, seeds, beans, and legumes. Now, consuming these high-quality proteins will allow you to stabilize your blood sugar through improving insulin sensitivity and insulin production, prevent overeating, and help you lose weight. Now that we talked about protein, let's move on to lastly to fat. Now, fat has gotten a bad reputation over the years, and is so-called the fat guy. Now, most doctors will tell you to avoid it, and the low-fat diet has been promoted as the standard for most people, including diabetics. Now, let me say this. Fat does not make you fat. Fat is essential for normal growth and development and energy. Fat is the most concentrated source of energy we can possibly consume. Uh, absorbing uh, Fat helps us absorb certain vitamins like A, D, vitamin E, K, and carotenoids, providing cushioning for our organs and maintains cell membranes, providing
provides taste, consistency, and stability to our foods, and tons of other benefits. Now, there are three main types of fat. Unsaturated fat, uh, sorry, saturated fat, unsaturated fat, and trans fat. Now let's, oh, let's go back there. Uh, saturated fats, let's talk a little bit about those. Now, despite what you may have heard um, or been told, in the past, saturated fats are good for you. Saturated fat has been scrutinized mainly because they are often high in cholesterol. Well, let me tell you this. Cholesterol is actually one of the most important nutrients you can possibly consume. Every human cell needs it. The brain is primarily made up of it, and cholesterol is a precursor to all sex hormones. In fact, a high saturated fat fat diet intake has been shown to reduce what we call bad cholesterol, the LDL, and raise good cholesterol, HDL, and it helps cleanse the liver. And that's a fact. Saturated fats include butter, meats, cream, lard, and coconut oil. Now we talk about saturated fats, let's move on to unsaturated fats. Now, unsaturated fats have the ability to lower cholesterol and triglyceride levels, usually an issue for diabetics, improve brain function, reduce pain, and help prevent cancer. Now, one of, the main, one of their most important benefits is the ability to reduce inflammation. Since diabetes is an inflammatory disease, unsaturated fats help combat diabetes. Now, unsaturated fats include things like olive oil, avocados, walnuts, responsible for at least 30,000 premature heart disease deaths each year. These are, uh, these are a chemically altered type of fat that is made up by adding hydrogen to vegetable oil, a process called hydrogenation, which allows a longer shelf life and extended cooking use. They can be found in about 40-50% to 50 of the products in your grocery store, and probably even a little bit higher. Now, this type of fat is one of the worst things you can, can consume, causing severe damage within your blood vessel walls. Now, they also increase your LDL, your bad cholesterol, lipoproteins, and triglycerides. Avoid these at all costs. Now, trans fats are found in baked goods, fried foods, mostly snack and any junk foods, and margarine. Just like I mentioned, the carbohydrates that are processed or pre-packaged or in a box, a lot of those contain uh, trans fats. Now, what types of fats should you exactly be eating? Now, as we discussed, with both saturated fat and unsaturated fats are essential for good health, but they are also weapons in the, your battle against type 2 diabetes. Making them a part of your daily diet is a must. Here are a few tips to get the right fats in your diet. Use coconut oil or grass-fed butter for cooking. Add olive oil and vinegar to salads instead of store-bought dressings. Add grass-fed butter to your steamed vegetables. Add avocados to your salads or eat them alone as a snack. Use walnuts, almonds, macadamia nuts as a snack or add them to plain green yogurt. Now, you might be wondering, how do you transition to your new diet? It's, I know it's going to be hard, but I know firsthand that this type of diet approach works, and it has worked for countless number of people that I've helped. Now, it truly is best diet for type 2 diabetes because it's based on the latest research on diabetes, nutrition, metabolism, physiology, and holistic medicine. You just need to follow it. Just do it. Now, I know making the transition to the foods I mentioned may seem difficult. Really, it's not. But for the sake right now, let's just say it is difficult. Ask yourself this. If I don't start making the necessary changes in my diet, where will my, where will my health be in the next three to five years? And be honest with your answer. Whether you, whether you charge full steam ahead or choose a more gradual approach to, the, to incorporating these foods in your diet, the important thing is that you're making a conscious change for the better. And as 
as the old saying goes, you can't expect a different result if you keep doing the same things. If you are having roller coaster blood sugar levels, if your diabetic complications are worsening, if you're not losing weight, if you're not just getting the results you've 